everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Kelly Dell from Off the Beaded Path. And you'll notice today that I'm joined by Allie from Potomac Beads today. Um, Allie is going to talk to us about the new dragon thread that you guys have been asking me lots of questions about. So I said, hey, we're going to go to the source and we are going to find out about dragon thread thread. So Allie, welcome. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you so, so much for having me. It's really fun to be able to connect with other people. The beading community is amazing. So this is fun. When I had said uh, to some of the live streamers that were watching me on Twitch the other day, I was like, yeah, I'm going to talk to Kelly. They're like, Kelly is amazing. That's so <laughs> cool. I was like, yeah, it's fun to get to talk to uh, other creators and crafters and the community is awesome. So this is, uh, this is great. No, I love it. Okay. So tell us about Dragon Thread. What is Dragon Thread for those people who do not know? So Dragon Thread, don't worry, it's not going to like burn you. It's not fiery or anything. Um, Dragon Thread is a new thread. So when working with thread, when beading, when doing jewelry making, there's always those things that you wish that you could tweak about different products. And, you know, oh, I wish this was a little bit thinner. I wish this was a little bit stronger. I wish this didn't come off on my hands. And there's been a lot of threads on the market that aren't necessarily created in the crafting sphere. It's for fishing, they're for um, different uses on embroidery and all of that. And when beading, I've always thought with different designs, you know, I love wildfire thread. It's a great thread. It's a little thick sometimes to get back through beads. Fireline, if I want to use it, that black comes off on my fingers sometimes. So how to improve, change these, and really pull a ton of beaters, community members, um, people that are in the craft and ask them what they want. So through that came Dragon Thread. So this is our newest beading thread. Um, it is a thermally bonded thread thread like wildfire or fireline thread. Um, it is available in a couple different colors, a couple different thicknesses, which we'll go over, but it is a beading thread designed specifically for beaters. So it's been really great to uh, be part of the innovation of it, which has taken about two plus years through different product samplings and changing this and that and back and forth. So we're really excited to finally bring this to the market. No, it's like a new baby. You're like, hey, look at my baby world. So. I know, exactly. And this one I get to like benefit from right away rather than having to change diapers and whatnot. This is, this is exciting to see this come to, uh, come to fruition. Exactly, exactly. So why the name Dragon Thread? Like what made you name it Dragon Thread or did you name it? Yes. So um, the Dragon Thread is being offered by BTech. So that's a side um, side affiliate kind of company that is going to be bringing more beading materials and pre premium beading materials to the beading world that are designed and constructed and innovated by actual beaters and jewelry makers. So we went through a ton of different samples, tons of different ideas. And we thought, what is strong, fierce to be able to give that impression that, you know, it is a great thread and it's a strong thread. The best way to cut it or work with it is actually to burn it. So that's kind of where that idea of the dragon came from is, you know, this thread is really strong. It's really tough. It is great to work with. It has that supple feel. So not getting too much into the dragon, but, you know, you've got that strong strong back and those scales and everything and i uh, thought the name was really really fitting yet fun too because we're all in this to have fun so fantastic okay cool deal so now um what colors currently does it come in and are you going to make new colors we are so yes yeah, so currently we have it in a couple different colors we have a green color here which is almost um an olive green and then we have the white and then we have the black thread color as well. We have them available in two sizes currently. They are available in the 0 .005, 0 .006, and in those three colors. And they're available in both 50 meters. So usually most of the other threads, they're done in yards. We're doing them in meters. So you get more already because a meter is longer than a yard. And we also reduced the spool size because there's a ton of plastic waste, honestly, with a lot of the spools. They're empty in the middle. Um, there's not a ton of use for them after the fact. If you have ideas, you can always put those comments in Kelly's video for what you guys use the rules for after. We love to see that. Um, but we shrunk the actual plastic on the rolls um, for some of the smaller ones, even the bigger ones. These are smaller 
smaller spools as well. And excited to have these three colors. And then yes, there are more colors that are currently in production. So we're really excited to be able to expand the colors right away. And we'll be adding a gray color as well as a goldish cream color. So it's gonna match really well if you go in and kind of have those gold seed beads, it'll match with those colors. Nice, nice, yeah. Because when I got the spool and you guys sent me the, the three colors, um, at first I thought, oh, there's no way there's all that, like there's, I, how can you put that much thread on this spool? But I love the size spool because like, I just slid it in my pocket the other day to take it somewhere. And I was like, this is amazing that this little tiny spool has 50 meters on it. Like I loved that about a yeah. size spool. Um, yeah. it also fits in all your little storage boxes. So that works That's way better than having something that's this size. That yeah, we fun. travel a ton. And I mean, we're changing. I understand the way that that was for production and for um, going to craft stores and everything's changing. So why have to have those craft store hang up on the wall, wasted plastic items? So we are um, we were excited to be able to, to change it up. We had them originally on the big spools. And uh, one of our customer care members was like, why do we always have this on big spools? Good question. That is a great question. This now I can, we travel a lot, so I can pop it into my little beading box. Good to go. And yeah, it is actually 50 meters. So you're already getting that 15% uh, more for a lower price. And that's the other great thing. We've been able to offer these at, at a lower price for even more thread. So now, Allie, can you show everybody? Because, um, you know, of course, like these, you know, you have to have the little thing, or you don't have to, but they always put these on there. Um, can you show people on the backs of your thread how to secure the thread, like when you're using it and you're done with it? Yep. So the big spools, they actually come with a little plastic here. It's like a little, almost like a hair tie, little rubber piece. Keep that on because that is your actual. This was our, again, reducing plastic. This was our thread guard that we did. So it doesn't have an actual plastic clip on it. It has this little rubber band on it on the bigger spools. Keep that on. They also have a little bit of a tuck area there. They have the slit in the roll. And for the smaller ones, same deal. They have that little slit in a roll. It's also where you're gonna start your thread. There's a little piece of plastic right there. You're gonna take that off. And then that has just like a little sewing bobbin. Most of us do lots of crafts. Um, it has the little sewing bobbin there for you to actually tuck your thread into that area. And then also um, coming and in production are some thread guards that if you're a fan of it, um, to put them on here, some of the other ones uh, will fit on there. We're designing smaller ones as well to go on the smaller spools. So that way it'll go over inexpensive things that you can reuse and reutilize rather than the plastic. There'll be a, a stretchy fabric and that way um, they'll stretch around and you can use them from one to another. And sometimes these guys will break and snap off. So I like the idea of having having that. This this roll in this spool, uh, my husband cut my plastic off of. <laughs> ah. kind of don't, don't cut the rubber off of your roll because it will unspool. And then it is super full, but you can go in and you can tuck it down into that corner there. Thank goodness. Yeah, I was on a live with um, Meredith from Beatalon yesterday, and I pulled out some wire that had um, the, it had just popped open, like the whole thing was just undone. And she's like, yeah, well, you could have used a spool tamer for that. And I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's a little too late for this spool, but yeah. we'll go with that for another spool. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's uh, she's great. And I know she's been a big component of the wildfire. And I've used wildfire for years and still love wildfire. I still love that, use it. And the dragon thread kind of fills in the gap from there. Um, right. We've had, because of COVID and because of the last year and a half, a lot of supply chain issues. And it's been nice to, um, this has taken longer to get here, uh, thanks to container ships and whatnot. But it's been nice to, use it in conjunction with other threads, be able to supply it and have plenty on hand. That way there's not the shortage again, like there was last year, that holiday time where it was really hard to find thread. Um, we've got plenty. And talking uh, with Meredith, she's been a huge component, a, a proponent of the wildfire thread working with her. And I I still have handy, you know, always my, um, my wildfire. And how dragon thread is gonna be different than that wildfire and what I'm gonna use it for difference wise. So the dragon thread, I would say is more comparable, honestly, to fire line. 
So it's going to be comparable to the Fireline products. And we don't put a pound test on this right. because pound tests generally are for fishing. So rather than that pound test, we're really worried about the size when we have it. We are not going to have a 20 pound tension that's going to pull off our bracelets. You know, we're not, it's just, it's not the same. Right. So we took that off because I think it leads to confusion that people think six pound in wildfire is going to be the exact same as six pound in fire lined, or if we put that poundage on dragon line, and it's not the case. Right. So I think the better indicator is that actual measurement, which when you're getting really small, it's really hard even to get them the same based on that, that measurement. But it is a thermally bonded thread, which means that it is um, a high tech molecular weight braided and bonded um, polyethylene thread. So what that means is that they heat it so those pieces of thread that are twisted together are going to fuse together a little bit, which keeps it from fraying or having that needle poke through um, and split the thread as you're working with it. Um, our 0.5 is going to be about the same as a four pound fire line. Okay. Um, and then the 0.6 is going to be about the same as a six pound fire line. Um, I've always thought when it comes to wildfire, their 0.6 is more like a 10 pound, actually. It's a it's fair amount thicker yeah. um, working with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny because um, when I seen the dragon bear and I felt the thinness of it, I kind of had that like apprehension, like, Hey, this is really thin. I'm not sure how this is going to work. But after doing a few projects with it, I was like, Oh my God, I love this. And one of my best friends, Joy from California, she sent me this new necklace um, that she made me and it's um, awesome. size 13 tri-cut beads. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh my gosh, if you would have had this dragon thread to do this thing, you would have whizzed through it. Cause she was trying to find like the thinnest thread and the thinnest needle and all of that. And I was like, this dragon thread would have worked amazing for that. So yeah, it is, it has been great because it is thinner, but just as strong as those. So it is um, easier to thread the needle too, which is really great. So I can pick up a needle and thread it pretty easily to get that in there. I still always recommend, you know, flattening out that edge because I am a thread burner rather than a thread cutter. I know some people are either way, but I love this burner. I travel with burners, with thread burners. And because of that thermally bondedness, anytime I'm using wildfire, fire line, uh, dragon thread, I always have that burner really handy, ready to go. Okay, good deal. Mm -hmm. Um, now, speaking of the burner, you mentioned in the intro video you did on the Potomac Beads uh, YouTube channel, um, you mentioned that you can bond the two threads together with your thread burner. Can you show us how to do that? Because I was really intrigued because me personally, I did not know that you could do that. So if you could show us that, that would be fantastic. Yeah, so any of the thermally bonded threads, because they are bonded, so they have a coating on them that they get heated up and then that coating kind of stiffens up. So any of the thermally bonded threads, you can actually fuse together. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, at the end of my project or something where I'm going in and I'm ending it, that I'm going to fuse those two end to end. Right. What I'm talking about is if I have a section where I am creating a knot or knotting something together, kind of hiding it. Um, here at the bottom. What I can do then at the end of the thread, and I'll just show how this is going to burn. This is the uh, black 0 0.005, which was definitely one of my stipulations that uh, when we were doing the product development, the black does not come off on your fingers, um, that it stays in there. Yay, I know. Yeah. So with my thread question. burner um, and thread zap here, and whether or not you're using cord cutter or anything like that, you're going to be able to see See how it balls up there and gets that little bit. And it's hard to see, I know, um, with that little screen, but you see that balled up end. What's happening is the thread's not like burning off or coming off. That is melting. melting. So you can take the two thread ends anytime you need to. So let's see how good I am here on the fly and doing a knot here. And then a little prerequisite also, I've learned because we're talking so much about thread that people have a lot of bad thread habits of pulling their needle. Um, and what that does is no matter what thread you're using, that's gonna break down the thread. 
So as we talk more about thread, I'm like, oh, you know, people people need some see, some thread lessons here too, about pulling the thread, pulling your thread through a project rather than pulling the needle through. So you're not damaging whatever thread is in that eye because sometimes those eyes can actually be a little sharp. Right. So right. here I just did an overhand knot, and what I'm going to do is hold that together, and I'm burning this right like that, and already it has fused together a tiny little bit there because it's two hot pieces that are kind of going right next to each other. Right. So then as I burn down on that burn, that two ends, as I burn down doo -doo -doo -doo, and I get that burn correct, those two will lay next to one another and burn together. So right. if you have a big bead, you have something like that that you can hide that knot in, you can burn those two thread ends together so that way that knot is not going to come apart, which is really great because a lot of my pieces, honestly, I use big beads or bigger jewelry and working with multi-hole beads. So oftentimes I do have places where I can probably find it on this one, um, where I tie that thread together. And with a thinner thread and using that tying technique, it's nice because it's harder to find my knot than it is with a with the wildfire. I can usually find my knot pretty, pretty darn fast with my wildfire. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So now I noticed on the piece, not that piece, but the piece that you just had, you had some fringe mm -hmm. down at the bottom. So does mm -hmm. dragon thread work good for fringe? Absolutely. So it is a thinner thread and it is more supple that you'll notice, kind of more silky, more um, more of that thin feeling, especially if you're going with the thinner, the 0 0.005 is going to feel thin, especially if you're used to wildfire. If you're used to wildfire, you don't want that abrupt, oh my goodness, this thread is so thin, definitely go with that 0 0.006 first and try that out. And we are going to be adding a thicker one as well to um, a 0 0.008 also. So that's going to be in the works. Um, it works. The 0.5 here was used for this bookmark. And it goes through with a breeze through the Delicas. And really, Dragon Fret is great to transition from one thing to the other. So whether or not I'm using you know, heavier pearls, I can use it, or having that fringe be nice and easy and supple to use. This, I think, especially the 0.5, that is really fringes where that is going to shine because it gives that flexibility, that flow. It is awesome for fringe. And then also the 0.5 is great also for bead embroidery. Oh, good. Yeah, I actually did, um, I'm doing these earrings on my channel. Mm -hmm. This is the Mystique earrings. And I used the um, green dragon thread for it. And oh my gosh, it just slid right through the foundation and the ultra suede. And I was just so happy with how it works out when you're actually using it with that. Um, and were you using the 0.5 or the 0.6 for that uh, application? I no? used 0.6. Nice. Cool. Yeah, 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 that's what I use. Um, so my well, I, two things. Number one, Kelly Dell is going to put in her request for a color since everybody else did, and yeah. I want beige. Like I love okay. beige. Um, nice. Yes. So um, that is my request. But I did a project with crawl cubic right angle weave for those of you who mm -hmm. don't know, and it did not come out as stiff. Like it did not keep its shape like I wanted it to. So do you have any? tips or tricks or anything like that for someone who's going to be doing cubic right angle weave and making wanting a stiffer piece to keep it shape yeah so a lot of us and i know kelly you say the same thing i'm a really hard puller um i be really tightly so when i'm using the 0.05 and I'm using bigger beads. If I'm using like, here's just a Cellini little sample that we're doing. If I'm using bigger beads, the 0.5, it does feel thin. I would recommend using that 0.6 for it. And when you're doing something that does take a shape to it, or you're working with bigger beads to it, and you're used to that thicker, whether or not you're using 10 pound fire line, or you're using that wildfire, it is going to have a different feel. Right. Um, when you are pulling and using the thread and that 0 0.006 for the thicker, for the um, bigger beads, I would recommend the 0.6 for anything that's tubular or anything that is going to be kind of three-dimensional because right. that is going to get it a little bit stiffer. Also, as you go through whether or not this is a uh, Russian spiral, sorry, Salini, not, not Salini, Russian, but as you're going through just doing this little sample piece, trying to figure out, all right, um, how, how to address kind of whether or not it's stiff, whether or not it's not, 
I don't ever recommend, some people will recommend, like I did with the black thread, don't double up your thread. You don't need to. You shouldn't have to double up your thread. You don't need to double up that thread. Um, pull a little bit tighter, but in that case, honestly, that's why the product development, the feedback, we're going to get a thicker one in there too. So have that thicker one available to use for some of that. Crawl is always a hard one because if you want it to stay in that little cubic right angle weave version versus something that's a little bit round. Round is easy. Sometimes you can stick a rubber tube through there if you want to. Jewelers have all kinds of tricks of you know, putting pencils down there if it's straight for a whole section, if they want wire down there. The same can be done for a crawl, but um, really utilizing it, making sure as you pull, you are getting rid of that slack because it does have that supple pull. And at the end of each of your crawl units, at the end of each of your stations, when you're working with like a Russian spiral or even going um, with a herringbone stitch, this is one that I'm working on right now, at the end of each row, I'm making sure that I'm tightening that up because oftentimes you don't realize that you have some thread slack that's in here because of that suppleness and that supple feel of it. I'm not used to having to pull quite as hard because it's a thicker thread. I don't have as much slack versus working with a thinner th thread where I do need to pull a little bit harder. And here's where I was saying, any thread you use, always a good pra practice, whether or not you're using Miyuki thread, whether or not you're using dragon thread, whether or not you're using fire lime, pull your thread out of your project. Do not pull your needle. Because no matter what needle type you're using, no matter what type of thread you're using, right there in that eye, that thread has a lot of pressure on it because you're pulling by that needle as you sew through all your layers and all of your levels. So always go through and pull the thread through your project rather than that needle end. Gotcha, gotcha. And I have to say, um, because I am a super tight beater, I used the dragon thread and did a herringbone necklace. Now, I have to be so careful when I do herringbone, because if not, it, the tube ends up way too stiff and you can't even like make it into a bracelet or whatever you want to do. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, the, the, the technique of doing that with the dragon thread made my life so much easier. I was just like, this is amazing. That's what sold me on this thread was that particular project because I thought this is amazing. I will never get rid of this thread. Yeah, and that's the same thing with working with this Russian spiral. And honestly, this is just picking up random beads that was on the bead mat. You get this flexibility that normally the same thing when you're working with cubic, when you're working with anything tubular, you usually, it's stiff. It's hard to bend into that shape. And you're like, man, I want to make this a bangle, but is the thread going to pop? Is it like, is my crystal area? You know, I have had a lot of bangles that have broken because there's a lot of tension on there to right. get it to turn, to get it to work. So the dragon thread has been awesome to get that into its shape, to kind of turn around and that kind of suppleness and that flexibility that the th thread provides. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good deal. Well, my last, I guess, important question is, can our friends in the UK get this? Because I know that you've got it here in the States, but can our friends in the UK and overseas, can they get the Dragon Thread? Yeah, so the Dragon Thread is available um, on PotomacBeads.eu site, um, so you can get that over, over there as well. And then um, Bead Tech is hoping to uh, have available soon some uh, wholesale opportunities for some other people to get their hands on the Dragon Thread to be able to get to their customers as well. Like I said, we're kind of an amazing, uh, fun beading community. I always tell people when they are um, getting into beading, you're going to meet great people. It's a great app opportunity to interact with like-minded people. Everybody's super friendly and great and like, looking forward to kind of getting the Dragon Thread out there more so that way more hands can get on it. We can do more customers customer feedback on it. Tell us what you want. I know Kelly wants beige. Got that um, beige. And I know a couple people want a little bit thicker as well. So take some product development time, but those things are coming. So I know speaking of fun, um, I am a member of the, uh, the bead society of the Palm beaches and we Ooh. were meeting in zoom and um, we played bingo last night. I did not know oh. you could play digital bingo. And I was like, how fun is this to play bingo with people from all over? Like, that's cool. Yeah, it was just so, 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 so much fun. Yes. Yeah. We have, um, we have the great opportunity uh, through Facebook, through, you know, 
this Zoom, I mean, we get to hang out and chat and uh, we don't live anywhere close to each other. Um, so it's been a, a fun thing. Beaters are awesome. Beaters are fun. And uh, it's really fun to hang out with other crafters. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Allie, thank you so much um, for doing this with me today. And guys, know that if you have any questions about Dragon Thread, shoot Allie an email over at Potomac Beads. Um, so Allie, what is a good email or where can they hit a contact us to find out any, get any questions answered? So you can go over to PotomacBeads.com and then if you want to scroll down to the bottom, there's usually a little chat widget that pops up for our customer care team. And then you can just email us at hello at PotomacBeads.com. So you can say hi to us and uh, give us your feedback, let us know. And then always as well with YouTube, um, go ahead and type those comments right in this video and we will uh, check them out, read them and respond back as well too for, uh, for you viewers of Kelly's videos. Fantastic. And um, Allie, if you will, for those who may not have ever heard of Potomac Beads or anything mm -hmm. like that, tell us you do lives and all that kind of stuff. So tell us kind of your schedule of what you do on Facebook, YouTube, all the all the awesome platforms. Perfect. Yeah. So we uh, promote and we create uh, four to five live or four to five YouTube videos a week. So we produce about four to five YouTube videos a week. You get to see my face a lot um, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. But we also really love that community aspect. YouTube very much so is one-sided a lot because I'm reading the comments after. Sometimes we do go live on YouTube, but we go live every Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Facebook. And you can get to there through the Potomac Beads site on Facebook. Right after that, um, I stream live on Twitch. So if you go to twitch.tv slash Potomac Beads, um, we are in the makers and crafters sphere. Don't be intimidated if you go to twitch.tv and you're like, oh my goodness, it's a lot of gamers, but the streaming platform is awesome. We have a great community. Um, everybody chats on the side. We have fun. Kelly, you're going to have to come in and chat with me or even stream with me one time. We hang out. We drink coffee. Some people, a lot of UK watchers, they're... Uh, they're having their dinner and they give me suggestions for dinner. We work through YouTube project products. They watch me product tests. So that's super fun. And then we also go live on Thursday, same deal, one o'clock on Twitch going live there. And then our YouTube videos come out Monday morning, Tuesday afternoon. They come out Thursday morning, Saturday morning, and sometimes Friday morning as well. So lots of videos. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, lots, lots and lots of videos. I have an amazing group of coworkers. That's how I do it. Hey, so. that's, that's what it takes. It takes a team because I can tell you, I don't know what I would do without my husband, Sammy, because he's the one who kind of edits videos and uploads them and all that. And I know that he wants to pull his hair out sometimes. <laughs> so I don't know how to do any of that either. So yeah. you just uh, make friends and uh, hire great people that can do that for you. I say it's kind of like the... Um, the, the wizard behind the curtains. There's wizards behind those curtains. I'm in front of it and they just tell me where to click to record. And then they're like, and then don't touch anything. Don't do anything because I screw up technology all the time. Oh gosh. All right. Well, thank you so much, Allie. Thank you to everybody. And like I said, make sure to hit up Allie, give her a thumbs up, um, everything. Um, and definitely go to Potomac Beads and get you some of this dragon thread. You will not regret it. Okay. Not regret it, but don't be like those negative Nellies and only do one project with it and say, oh, I don't like that. It takes about eight. I always tell people it takes about eight projects to really know if you like a thread or not. I mean, Allie, how many do you normally test a thread with before you know if you're going to like it or not? Oh, gosh, that is a huge process. So I had six months of product testing the thread. I made a bracelet that I wore through all sports that I was doing showers, everything sewed it directly onto my wrist and wore this kind of ugly color block bracelet for a while for product testing. So we go through a ton of product testing, but yeah, same deal. Um, I feel like you can't really review a product if you're using it for one type of stitch or one type of beading or one type of jewelry making. A good eight projects, I think Kelly, you're on, on spot with that. That's a great rule. To, to try it out for multiple different ways. Absolutely, absolutely so. All right, well, everybody, thank you so much again, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.